Hi and welcome to this question tutorial. So here's our first practice question. Pause the video and give it a go. So in this question, we've been asked which statements are true. So I'm going to underline true just so I don't make any sort of error. And I'm going to annotate, so tick and cross the statements as I go through to select the right option. So statement one, mutations can cause a change in genetic material. So they've used the word can here, which is quite an open word. And yeah, I agree. Mutations can cause a change in the genetic material. Looking at statement two, mutations can be beneficial. Again, they've used that word can. They can be beneficial. So despite the connotations of the word mutation, they can of course be beneficial. That is what drives evolution. There are lots of beneficial mutations that can happen. So yes, this statement is true. So I'm going to give both of these a green tick to say, yep, yeah, they are true. And statement three, mutations always lead to a dysfunctional protein being coded for. So they've used this word always. It's quite a definitive term, an extreme word to use. And you need to be really careful of these terms in BMAT, always, never, etc. So we've just talked about an example before where sometimes we get beneficial mutations, but we also have things called silent mutations, which is where there is a change in the DNA code, but three bases code for protein. And there's a bit of a wobble region there where you can actually change a base and you don't get a change to the amino acid because the code is degenerative. So in this particular case, you can get something called silent mutations and therefore you don't get a change in the phenotype. You don't get a change in the protein being made. That's why they're called silent mutations okay, because you don't see the effects. So this statement is incorrect. Be really careful when you see words such as always. If we look at statement four, mutations will lead to disease. Again, quite a definitive term, will lead to disease. So we need to be really careful of that. Actually, some mutations can cause dysfunctional proteins that don't lead to a disease as such, or as an example we said before, you might get a silent mutation which does not get seen in the phenotype at all. It's silent. So again, unlike statements two and three, which use terms such as can, both statements three and four have these strong terms, always and will. That statement is also incorrect. So statements one and two are correct. So we select option C. Here's the second question. Pause the video and give it a go. So the first thing we need to notice from this diagram is that this is a recessive condition because we've got two parents, Cheryl and Brad, having, they are unaffected and they have an affected child. So it has to be recessive. Remember our shortcuts from the previous video. So Tanya must be lowercase a, lowercase a. So homozygous recessive. So immediately I can eliminate an option. Let's go to Tanya's column and I can eliminate option C. Then... Because Tanya is lowercase a, lowercase a, she has to have been given a recessive allele from each parent. So both parents, because they're unaffected, but they have a recessive allele, they must be carriers. They must be heterozygous. So uppercase a, lowercase, uppercase a, lowercase. Again, what can we eliminate here? Well, we've got Cheryl's genotype. We can eliminate option D because that has, hers, has her as recessive. And she'd obviously have the condition if, if that was the case. Finally, Let's have a look at uh, Graham. So we've been told that Graham is unaffected, okay? So that means he's either capital A, dominant, homozygous, or hetero. And in this particular case, we don't have an option to have capital A, capital A. We've only got a situation where he's affected, which he's not, or where he's a carrier. So therefore, we know that the answer must be B. For completeness, we also know that Henry must be lowercase a, lowercase a, recessive, homozygous recessive, um, because he is affected. Okay, so the answer here is, of course, B. So again, a reminder of what we've covered in these theory and question tutorials. So we've had a look at DNA, chromosomes and alleles. We've had a look at genetic crosses. We've had a look at recessive and dominant conditions and some shortcuts of those conditions too. So if you found some of these questions challenging, make sure you go back to those theory tutorials on inheritance and take some really good notes.